You want to know the path that I would take if I was trying to get into cybersecurity today? Well, in this video, I'm going to walk you through the path that I would take if I was trying to break into cybersecurity starting over from today. But first, welcome to the channel or welcome back. My name is John Good, and on this channel, we talk all about cybersecurity. If you enjoy the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you think of any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Also, make sure to check out the description for more resources and training. All right, let's do this. All right, now for any of these certifications that we talk about in this video, I want you to actually check out my website under the resources section. And there's this certification page where you can drill down into the specific certifications and see the different resources that I recommend. So the path that we're gonna cover is gonna be based on my experience, what I've seen be successful, and what I see going on in the industry right now. If you have other ideas about what might be successful, I'd love to hear it. But this is what I believe is gonna be the best path if I was starting over from right now. All right, let's begin. If there's one thing that I've learned from working in cybersecurity, it's that networking is the basis of everything. If we had computers that weren't connected up to each other, then things would be a lot easier. But that's just not how it is. And networks are really where things start. So the first thing that I would do today is look at the Network Plus from CompTIA. I know this is gonna trigger people right away, but when I was early in my career, I had two CCNAs one in routing and switching, and one in security. And I basically almost never used that Cisco specific knowledge in my jobs. The networking knowledge is absolutely valuable, but the CCNA just adds an extra layer of unnecessary difficulty that will go away eventually anyways. Now, this is the Network Plus from CompTIA. If we go ahead and we scroll down here, we can see that this is all about network implementations, network operations, network troubleshooting, and overall just network things. So the different roles that you see, junior network administrator, network engineer, knock technician, and so on. If we scroll down here and we take a little bit of a look at the exam details, we can see that the current version is this 008 version. This 007 version is no longer the one that you'll be taking. But if we scroll down here and we see there's 90 minutes to take this actual exam, you need a 720 score to pass. They recommend an A plus and at least nine to 12 months of networking experience. It's only a recommendation. You don't have to have that in order to sit for the exam. And then the cost is 348 US dollars. The next thing that I would wanna do is start looking at operating systems, specifically Linux. So I would look at the Linux Plus from CompTIA. Now I know a lot of people are gonna say, well, what about Windows? Well, here's the thing. Linux is used in a ton of back end operations. So processing power, storage, and the list goes on and on and on. But the problem is that with everybody kind of as they grow up in technology, a lot of people are using Windows. They're not really using Linux. So they don't get that extra exposure. And then when it comes time to getting a job, they're intimidated by Linux. That's a real issue. Also, if you know Linux and you're comfortable with it, people are gonna just assume naturally that you know Windows. And in most environments, a lot of people are gonna assume you know Windows anyways. Because again, everybody is just brought up in that Windows environment, and it really is a little bit easier to learn than Linux. Historically, we had an MCSA and an MCSE in every version of Windows, and that would be a really good option for certifying and knowing Windows, but that just doesn't exist today. Microsoft is really pushing their cloud environment and those cloud certifications, so you don't get it at the operating system level. I would also try to learn PowerShell and Bash scripting and try to automate anything I can because that's gonna come in handy later on. This is the Linux Plus from CompTIA. If we go ahead and scroll down here, we can see a little bit about what you're gonna learn for this certification. So Linux security, hardware and system configuration, system operation and maintenance, automation and scripting, Linux troubleshooting and diagnostics. If we scroll down here, different job titles, Linux administrator, network administrator, and honestly with the Network Plus, you're gonna see a lot of job roles that can get value out of this that are not listed on here because there's jobs like security or cloud jobs. And they're, again, they're just not listed on here. If we scroll down here, you'll see the current exam version. And depending on when you watch this, this could be a different version. It was launched in 2019. So it's been out for a few years as of a, the recording of this video. You get a maximum of 90 questions. You get 90 minutes. You need a 720 to pass. Again, the experience recommendations are only recommendations. You don't have to have them 
in order to actually sit for the exam or to be certified. And then 348 US dollars. Next, I would start to learn about Amazon Web Services or AWS, which is all about cloud. Specifically, you wanna grab the AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner. That's AWS's entry-level certification and the AWS Solutions Architect Associate certifications. Now, these two are gonna give you good credibility in the cloud space because you're gonna know the basics and then you're gonna know past that at an associate level. And this is gonna be the vendor with the highest market share of all the cloud vendors. Now, the AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner is the entry-level certification for the AWS cloud certifications. You get 90 minutes to actually complete this exam and it's only a hundred bucks to take the exam. So it's really not bad, especially for an entry level certification. You get 65 questions that are multiple choice or multiple response. Now you can take this exam online, which is awesome and extremely convenient. And that's with a lot of the AWS certifications. And then you have the AWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate, which is the next step up from the CCP. And so it's gonna be a little bit more difficult exam you get 130 minutes to complete the exam. It costs $150. Again, 65 questions, multiple choice, or multiple response. Now, you do need a little bit more familiarity with the AWS environment than you do for the CCP because you're going to learn more in depth about a lot of these technologies that you're going to need to know to be an AWS certified engineer. If I'm specifically looking at cloud security, the architect path makes sense because you're not really gonna be that person in the operations room that's doing the configuration of a lot of this stuff. At this point, I'd start focusing on cybersecurity. And because I already have that cloud knowledge, I would pick up the AWS Security Specialty Certification. That just gives me that focus in the cloud for cybersecurity. Now with AWS, they have different specialties that you can get. They haven't made a specific security certification path like they have for the architect path but this will give you more of insight into the securing of an AWS environment. So you get 170 minutes to complete the exam. $300 is the cost, so it's a little bit more expensive. Again, 65 questions, multiple choice or multiple response. And then they want you to have a little bit more experience in order to do this certification exam, and specifically with AWS, because you just need to know it a little bit better than the other certification exams. Whenever I talk about preparing for cloud certifications, A Cloud Guru is the place to go. It is such a good cloud preparation platform that I would not go with another platform if you can afford it. If we look at the pricing here, we can see there's some different options, but the benefit of this personal plus plan is that you actually get sandbox environments. So you don't have to worry about setting up your own environment in AWS, Azure, or GCP, you can actually do it within the platform and set it up for the specific labs that you're doing. Then I would grab the Security Plus from CompTIA. It's just too valuable based on how many job postings have it. And then that way I would get more knowledge about cybersecurity from a higher level and a more broad area than just cloud security. This is the Security Plus. This is probably one of the best known security certifications because it really is tailored towards the entry level, which a lot of people get this when they wanna learn a little bit about security. But if we scroll down here, we can see what you're gonna learn. So attacks, threats and vulnerabilities, architecture and design, implementation, governance, risk and compliance, operations and incident response. So again, it's very curated, so you only get the stuff about security that you're gonna to need to know. If we scroll down here, we can see different job roles. So security administrator, system administrator. Again, you're gonna see a lot of different job roles that are gonna have this security certification because it touches a lot of different areas. If we scroll down here, the current version is this SY0601, came out in 2020. You get a maximum of 90 questions, multiple choice and performance-based questions. You get up to 90 minutes to take the exam. You need a 750 score to pass. Again, just like the other CompTIA certifications, this is only a recommendation, this is not a requirement. And then the cost is 381 US dollars. Once I have all these certifications, I would kind of take a semi break and I would actually shift gears and start learning about Python. Python is one of those things that if you know and you can get really good at, it's very helpful. But even just knowing it at a beginner level is super crucial in your career. And that kind of rounds out your skills. For Python, you don't necessarily need a certification 
it can be helpful because you can show that you know a certain level of knowledge for Python. Honestly, a lot of projects and things like that that you can do on a GitHub profile or anything like that that you can show on players is equivalent, but this can be a quick way to show what you know. So they have a few different certifications that you can get. This is the entry level Python programmer. And again, they do have a few others. So they have an associate level and they have a professional one and a professional two level that are just more in depth and you have to have a better understanding and a better grasp of Python. Honestly, not a lot of people are gonna have these certifications. So if you do get them, you probably are gonna stand out a little bit more, especially if you have projects to go with it. Now, the reason that my path focuses on the things that it does is because I really believe in being a well-rounded professional. You wanna know about a lot of different things, but especially when you're starting out, you have to know about networking. You have to know about Linux. You have to know about Windows. You should definitely know about cloud. This is the highest return path that I honestly believe you should take if you're starting from the beginning. And it's what I would do personally if I was starting from the beginning. The area with the most opportunity for growth and opportunity for salary and progression is cloud. It is not pen testing. It's not security operations. I'm telling you, it's cloud. If you wanna move fastly through the ranks and get those high paying jobs very quickly, then I would look at cloud. And I can't say that enough. I'm literally giving you the path for free that's gonna get you to the highest, the quickest, and get you the most pay. So just make sure when you get to the top that you acknowledge me. Question of the day, which area of cybersecurity are you most interested in? Let me know down in the comment section below. In this video, we walked through the path that I would take if I was starting over trying to get into cybersecurity today. Remember, there's all kinds of paths that you can take to get into cybersecurity, but cloud is the one that's gonna allow you to excel the quickest. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the description for more training and resources, and I'll see you next time.